Now that you have seen what CakePHP can do, you are surely eager to try it out yourself. To get started with CakePHP, all you really need is a machine which has PHP installed on it. You can check that via opening a terminal and just write php-v and see if you get an output. So it should look something like this. This is the command and here I have php 8.1.4 installed. If you don't have PHP installed, you will have to look up a tutorial on yourself because installing PHP on your OS could be pretty difficult, but you will have to look up that for yourself. Anyway, the next thing we definitely need is Composer. Composer is basically a glorified downloader tool to get every PHP package installed on your machine. To get Composer running, just execute the four commands which are linked on this web page, which, which is also in the description down below. And you should get a Composer installed on your machine. So I'll just copy that in here. It will download Composer for us. And now we have a Composer.far file present. With that, we can now go back to our CakePHP book into the documentation. And inside the quick start guide, if you scroll down a little bit, you will have this command, which will basically download CakePHP and get everything running for us. So let's just copy that and execute that as well. And now a little special um, exclusion for C shell or Z shell users out there, since the asterisk here is sort of a special character, we will have to escape that to make uh, get it work in the Z shell environment. But for normal bash users or maybe in other terminals, this will not be a problem. Anyway, now Composer is doing stuff and we don't have to get into that now we can get into that later and the installer now just asks us if you want to set the folder permissions we say yes please set the folder permissions and basically now cake php is installed and we can get it to run but first we have to do a little bit uh, in that regard because now we have a cms folder present in our current working directory which we can also see in the terminal. So we will go into that CMS folder and in there, as you also see here in the, fold, uh, in the file directory and uh, the file tree, we have, uh, we, have, we have other folders as well. And to get CakePHP running, all you have to do now is type bin cake uh, server as a command. And here you can see that CakePHP already starts up a built-in server and prints out a URL you can go to to see what KKPHP is also already doing. So if we now go to that URL, you will see that page. On that page, you will see stuff like the PHP version you're currently running, which is, as I've seen, uh, as I've shown you before, uh, PHP 8.1.4. I have all the necessary PHP extensions installed, with which are MB string, OpenSSL, and Intel. If you don't have those installed, again, you will have to Google that for yourself because PHP extensions are can be quite finicky to install on certain OSs. Uh, here we can also see that all our file system directories are writable, and CakePHP is fine with that. That everything is here. The debug kit is already loaded, but we have one red error. And this error is definitely normal uh, after a fresh install of CakePHP because CakePHP currently doesn't have a connection to your database, which is pretty necessary to save data to, uh, to get CakePHP running. So uh, you will have to adjust your SQL user credentials in the config app underline local dot php file this is basically just a big array which just has data in there and inside this array there is a data source key inside is a default key and here we have the host username password and database so we'll, you will have to create 
uh, username and database for your typical MySQL server, which either is running on your local machine or in your local uh, network. This is all up to you. But anyway, let's just adjust these values and then refresh the page. All right, now I have adjusted my values. Let's go back to the website, refresh, and now we can see, yay, CakePHP can connect to the database. Uh, with that said, now you should be able to do anything CakePHP related that you want, like the first example I've shown you in the first tutorial where you can uh, generate all that code, but I will go into that a little bit in more detail in the next video. So with all that you're, you've done installing CakePHP, you know what to do, and I will see you in the next one.